Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I am Tori. If you're new here and today I'm going to go over a list of prepper items that I think every single person should have. I had a moment to uh, head out to the garden, sneak away, although I do see one, yep, one following me. Uh, I had a moment to do an intro, so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna attempt to film this video out here, but it is just such a beautiful night and I would love to show you some of my garden, but most importantly, I want to give you a list of items that I think you should stock up on right now. If you're new here, hi, hello, my name is Tori. I'd love it if you hit that subscribe button. We make preparedness videos on a budget. Everything I do is on a budget and if you are on on that journey with me. I would love it if you hit the subscribe button. All right, let's get into this list. We are starting with number one on the list and that is seeds. So many seeds stock up on seeds. I always have my favorite seeds linked down below. It's an incredible value, but we grew sunflowers with it. We grew some medicinal herbs with it and so many other things. So I suggest you stock up on that. But while I'm here, take a look at my beautiful garden. It is not the biggest, but we are gardening, uh, farming, homesteading. Oh, another child has found me uh, on just under an acre here. So we don't have a lot of room, but we are just loving what we have done this year. Sunflowers are in abundance and I plan to keep them dry and feed them to the chickens this year but seeds are a great thing to have in your prepper pantry in the event of an emergency you can grow your own food and the great thing about heirloom organic non-gmo seeds is you can continue to collect the seeds and that's what this seed packet does for you and it gives you a little book about what you can do with all of those seeds and medicinal plants so I hope you check that out I just wanted to give you a visual here before I turn you around and start talking your ear off about all the things that I think you should have on your prepper pantry shelves. So we're always talking about protecting our preps and sometimes uh, that goes a different way than what I'm about to say, but diatomaceous earth, let's protect our preps from bugs. I find that you can find this on sale all the time. It is super cheap and it's great for a lot of different things. We use it for our chickens and ducks, but I like to sprinkle it around different areas around my garden, around my preps, just to deter any sort of rodents or bugs that may come in contact with it. It's also great. We have started a little worm farm here. Shout out to my friend Millie who gave it to us, but uh, she put some charcoal powder and diatomaceous earth in there and that just, you know, keeps things pretty clean, but I didn't know that those two things can go together. And if you didn't know, worms are great for your compost for your garden. So that's something that's relatively low maintenance that I don't really talk a lot about and it's super cheap. So diatomaceous earth, food grade, this is really great to have, but on the subject of protecting our preps, let's get into the okay, next On the one. subject of protecting your preps. Of course, I am a uh, advocate for carrying. I am pro 2A and I think it's really important if you feel comfortable protecting your preps in that way. I get it all the time on the channel and I talk about it all the time. People are always saying that people are going to come to me in an event of an emergency and I won't be able to protect myself. Well, you are sadly mistaken. I uh, am married to a really great guy that got me into protecting myself. Uh, I grew Grew up in a hunting family. I have familiarized myself with how to use one of these tools and I think everyone should honestly. I used to think that maybe you know people should be hesitant and I still do think that but I think that uh, this subject for preppers is extremely threatening but on the other side of it there's a lot of comfortable women gun owners so I think it's really important to have this on hand but in order to make these guns work you need ammo and we stock up on it any type of ammo and I'm comfortable talking about it with you I am not an expert but I will say my husband is so if you have any questions drop them down below in the comment box don't be afraid it does not not need to be this scary thing. Of course, they can do terrible things, but that is in the hands of terrible people. So I did want to say that it's super important to have, especially when you may have a threat upon you. So if you're not comfortable with guns, of course, I'm going to link some others for you. I love knives, grew up around them. My dad, uh, you know, I was his only daughter. So he just really, really enlisted me when it came to a lot of his different interests. So we learned together, but knives, uh, my favorite uh, brand probably would be Benchmade. They're very pricey, but if you can get your hands on any sort of knife for self-defense or any other tool of that nature, they're super helpful to have in your prepper pantry. But if you're not comfortable with knives, there are other things. Uh, my husband has told me that OC spray, pepper spray works, but 
but uh, pepper spray is not the strongest. So if you can get your hands on something stronger, then that is great. You could definitely get a taser of sorts if you can uh, get a hold of one of those and keep it on your person. But you really have to think about that. Sometimes that does not deter people. Uh, you know, some people are stronger than that. So yes, uh, that is another option. And then I did have something linked my chickens are fighting. Okay, they're all right. I'm standing watch. We are integrating baby chicks and my uh, head hens are being jerks. But on the subject of other personal items for self-defense, you can look in my bio. I have this alarm and it like ranks at the highest decibel. So in the event of an emergency or an attacker, you can use this alarm and sound it off. Uh, hopefully you'll be used to the sound. I'm not sure if you would be though. It's gonna be loud for the both of you, but at least you can know that it's coming. If you're pushing the button so the foxy alarm always linked in my description box and that is it on self-defense but i have to add it into the prepper pantry it's something that i'm passionate about moving on to item number four it's going to be water and that really should be on the top of your list a lot of people overlook water and i get that you can have a few jugs in plastic in your prepper pantry that never hurts but you could also have cases of bottled water again that's better than nothing but you are going to want to think about other ways to get your water Water. And if you are getting water in other ways, i.e. a river, a creek, a stream, you're going to need a way to somehow purify it. And the life straws are great, but that's just going to get you like a guzzle of 20 ounces maybe. And then, you know, what else are you going to do? So I suggest looking into some sort of long-term water storage and I came short when I was looking into my uh, research just because I live in a pretty rural area but I still live in a neighborhood so I can store IBC tubs and they are really helpful they're huge huge gallons and you can use that if you want you can collect rainwater if you want and if it's legal but honestly it never rains in Colorado so I don't know what good that would do so that led me down the path of the water freedom course and essentially Actually, this guy in California, you know, uh, they were in a drought. Um, they had a backup water system. I believe he lived on a farm with his family and in his little bio of what he's selling, he really just, I don't know, he pulls at your heartstrings and I know we're supposed to leave emotions out of this kind of thing, but he really painted a picture of what could happen when your water just leaves. And then all of his backup storage was stolen as well. So I'm going to leave that link. You can read into it, but essentially it's a water freedom course. So you have this course of what to do in the event of an emergency. And he's a super great guy. You can reach out to him anytime you want. I'm sure he has a list of people that actually work for him now because it's a great course, but he also gives you blueprints to build one of your own water systems like he did and essentially it's foolproof there's no upkeep because it's a one setup system and i believe it can provide water security for your family in the event of an emergency so definitely check that out i think it's a great price it's like 39 dollars, and you get the blueprint so you can build it on your own of course he's not going to supply you the materials but it should be a fun project he says it's relatively easy to build so i'm excited to do that in our forever home i'm glad i got my hands on one of those. Next on the list, unfood related in a way, is going to be a way to cook food in the event of a grid down scenario. So I love my uh, Star Camp Stove. I believe that's from Four Patriots. I think they still make it. I'll link it. I'm not affiliated with them. They just sent me some stuff one time and they're really cool. And this is a relatively easy camp stove because all you need is some kindling and a way to start the fire. And it keeps that fire going. So I think that one's really cool. Of course, you can use your outside grill if you wanted. You could just cook over the fire if you don't need to cook and maybe you just have some cans that you're cool with just eating right out of definitely have those on hand I'm trying to think of things that aren't food related and that's really last on my list just because I talk about food so much on my channel I know a lot of you are new and this reminds me introduce yourself if you're new tell me how long have you been prepping I am relatively new to this I was raised to be prepared but uh, with my current family you know it's been it's been a journey, I will say, because prepping can get expensive. So that is why I turned to YouTube and I couldn't really find a lot of preparedness on a budget. So here I am starting my own channel, trying to learn with you. So definitely drop your tips and tricks in a positive way. I always have to say that because sometimes there's super mean people in the comments and it's not cool and I'll just delete your comments. So anyways, I'm gonna get away from this cricket. Camp stoves, 
ways to cook food that's a great thing to have on hand of course you're going to need a way to start a fire so waterproof matches are great if you have flint and steel that's great get you a husband that was an eagle scout who can start a fire like that or uh, teach you to start a fire or even challenge you to start a fire faster than him that's always a fun game to play next on the list relatively new to us uh i mean when it comes to prepping we always have this on hand just because my husband took an interest to it but it's going to be precious metals uh gold and silver specifically gold is going to be super expensive of course if you can get your hands on it and you have an unlimited budget you get that gold but a great alternative is silver and silver is relatively simple to find and it's not going to lose its value and it can be a universal currency so silver is a great one to stock up on if you don't have access to gold i have to say that i'm not affiliated with anybody check your local pawn shops find some feeds on reddit when it comes to coin collecting there is a lot of deception in the coin collecting world so definitely do your research find an expert to help you with that but precious metals has to go on my prepper pantry shelf i think it's super important Next on the list is going to be a lot of what I described. I'm near the cricket again. Sorry, I keep forgetting, but it's going to be in a bug out bag situation. So you're going to need food in there. I have plenty of videos on bug out bags. I'll link them down below, but you're going to need food in there. You're going to need a change of clothes, a way to get water, some sort of a uh, personal self-defense. You're also going to need a way to store your, uh, you know, precious paperwork, things like that, your mortgage, birth certificates, all that kind of thing in the event of an emergency where you have to flee your house. It's super important to have all these preps in a bag form so you can bring it with you. And you should have a bag for each member of your family. I have three children. Uh, they are four, three, and three months. So the three-month-old, she has her stuff with me. So that's like my only exception to the rule. But I did want to mention having a little mini prepper pantry in a bug out bag situation so I hope that's helpful I really think it's easy to put together you should have at least 72 hours that is what FEMA suggests but you never know how long you're going to be away if you can fit more fit more if you can keep it lighter keep it light so instead of cans keep some easy MREs that you can just take some water and heat it up or you could bring some packets of tuna again I have videos all about bug out bags so you don't really have to listen to me talk about it in this video but I had to put that because that is something we have on our prepper pantry shelf and I don't really talk about it that often so next on the list is going to be in the event of a power outage or something like that in the winter or maybe you're in a colder climate have some extra blankets have a sleeping bag I will link mine in the description box I got it for my husband when he did a heli trip and he loved it you know it kept him warm uh, they hiked up to you know a Kwanzaa hut and then they you know snowboarded down then took a helicopter up and it just was a lot and he was exhausted at the end of the day so he had the sleeping bag and it kept him super warm in the dead of winter on Wolf Creek Pass here in Colorado so I have to put that little thing in there but blankets work just fine as well as extra clothes for every member of your family you know it can get very very cold can we survive the cold yes but an extended amount of days uh, that might be a little tricky and some states are just not prepared for it. I think Texas a few years ago, you know, they suffered that issue in the dead of winter and a lot of the systems were just not in place for that to happen in Texas. So you have to think about that. In Colorado, you know, we have some pretty epic winters, so we are prepared for that uh, housing wise, but I did want to make that disclaimer. Just check where you are, figure out, I'm near the cricket again. I'm sorry. I'm trying my best here, uh, but uh, just figure out where you are and figure out what works for your scenario. I always do have to say that you can take this list and follow it to a T, but it will only work if it is individual to you. So only if it works for you is what I always like to say on the channel. And then last but not least is going to be paperwork. I suggest keeping all of your valuables in a fireproof, waterproof case. And then when you are thinking about paperwork and a prepper pantry. I have a lot to say about it. I think that everyone should have all of their digital forms in a paper way. So all of your recipes, print those out, put it in a binder, all of those cookbooks, save them, but maybe just take some recipes out that are your favorites. Other items to put in there are books on preparedness, maybe some foraging guides for your area. I will link all of my favorites down in the description box again, I know. But paper documents, I think, 
get constantly overlooked because people look to their phones all the time. I'm guilty of it myself and I think they are relatively easy to come by. Another thing that you could put in there are maps of your area, water maps, trails, things like that. Maybe you don't know your area that well. Um, I'm lucky we get to explore Colorado and my area when we first moved out here and I, I feel confident in the event of an emergency. I will know my way around but it's super important to have those maps. You can access them for free and print them out at your local library or you can just go into your county courthouse and ask them for those documents. I know that's how they do it here but it's possible they do it differently somewhere else. Alrighty my friends that is going to do it for today's video. I so hope you found this list helpful. Please remember anything I mentioned will be linked in the description box down below. Again if you're new here I'd love it if you introduce yourself if you feel comfortable. I would love to know a little bit about you. I promise I try and get to every single comment that I can if they are kind because I genuinely like connecting with all of you out there. So if you feel so obliged, please introduce yourself in the comments below. Please list anything that I have not said. Of course, we all look at the comments and it's super helpful for everybody. As always, stay adventurous, stay creative. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye y'all.